What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. The new movement in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is obviously going to feel different, but there's a couple of things that you can do to improve how movement feels, at least in the beta. Though, of course, things will likely change before the full release, and we may even get more options. So, in order to make movement in Black Ops 6 feel better, open up your options in the top right, followed by keyboard and mouse or controller. You'll both have this option. On the movement tab, you'll find sprint assist. Turn this on and adjust the sprint assist delay from 400 down to zero. Then scroll down, choose movement advanced settings, and inside of here, you'll find a couple of different options. Look for sprint restore and slide maintains sprint. Turn both of these on for a slightly better experience. A lot of these options are set by default. Then moving across to the mouse tab at the very top, choose mouse advanced settings. And in here, make sure that ADS sensitivity transition timing is set to after zoom for again, a slight improvement. Now, if you're experiencing delays in between shooting or pressing keys and actually seeing a movement change in game, obviously that could be the new momentum system. But for me, I was holding left click and nothing was happening for a second or two. The issue is that your system might just be running out of performance. The game is eating everything your PC has, leaving nothing for inputs from your mouse and keyboard, as crazy as that sounds. If I'm playing the game with uncapped FPS and I'm streaming on Discord or streaming on OBS, there's enough system resources being used that my inputs are being delayed. Head into your options at the very top, followed by interface, and make sure that over here, under telemetry, you have FPS counter, server latency, and packet loss all turned on to see what kind of FPS you're getting in game. Then once you've found your number, let's say 138 FPS, Head across to the graphics tab, followed by display, scroll down here until you find custom frame rate limit. Click show more. And then for the gameplay custom frame rate limit, set this down to just below what you were getting. So I said, what, 138? I'll set this to 120. If you're getting 100, set this to 90. Something like that, you'll free up some extra resources on your computer and make inputs feel a little bit snappier. On top of this, if you're using frame generation under the graphics quality tab over here, followed by upscaling slash sharpening, frame generation is going to cause you to get some extra input latency. There's the NVIDIA DLSS frame generation and for FSR3, you'll have frame generation here as well. If you have this turned on, your movement will feel a little bit more delayed as well as all of your general inputs on both controller and keyboard. I'm currently playing this with FX CAS, so I don't have frame generation here, neither in the DLSS frame generation here as well. This is turned off for me too. That's it with these little settings and little tweaks. You can get a better performance out of your game and better input latency, if we could call it that. There's a couple of issues that still need to be polished out. Obviously, this is early access. It's not even the beta just yet. And I'm super happy to see that this game is coming to Game Pass. So if you don't feel like spending the full amount of money, you can follow a guide in the description down below to get access now if you haven't already. Also on top of this, if you'd like a better performance from your game and a full breakdown of the options, you'll find an optimization guide linked down below as well. That's it. Thank you all for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot. Hopefully this video was useful for you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.